Hey folks, welcome back. Welcome to my garage. Um, it is stiflingly hot in here and I noticed no air currents whatsoever, which means it feels miserable in here, but should be good for the experiment. Um, I'm also gonna build a, a cover enclosing the whole thing, so that should take care of uh, any minimal um, uh, issues that we have with air currents for our revised version of the Cavendish experiment. I uh, wanted to talk you through some of the materials I'm using to change things up a little bit on this one. Uh, last time around, I'd used this metal bar, this uh, aluminum bar, and uh, that, that seemed to work okay. Um, but as we saw in the math video in the last one, um, I'll link to that in the description, uh, that the longer the, or further the masses are from the center of rotation, the better off we're gonna be. So, figured I'd get a longer bar. So this one is a three foot bar. And this one is a six foot bar. So we doubled the distance there. So we ought to get a little better results with that. The other thing I wanna change, I just put an eye bolt in this one and I ended up putting it um, not quite in the middle. So it didn't quite hang didn't hang quite straight. It was always off to one side a little bit. Um, and I think that that's a real possibility with any, any permanent fixture I'm gonna put in here. So I'm gonna put some little bracket on here in the middle um, that will be able to slide back and forth so I can get the balance just right on this one and adjust if need be. While I'm at it, I might as well make two more to put our weights on so that we can move them closer to the, the middle or farther from the, from the middle as well. And that'll be useful in our testing for the, the different torsional constants. Uh, I grabbed a Lazy Susan. I figured I could make a big structure that the heavy weights on the ground are sitting on and then just be able to rotate this um, from maybe pulling a, a string from a distance instead of having to get right in next to it and lift the, the heavy masses into place. Uh, I've got some big concrete blocks that I uh, poured into uh, um, buckets to form them for that. So I think those are uh, 50 pounds a, a piece maybe. So we'll, we'll get the exact numbers when I have the uh, have them handy for measurement. Um, just using some uh, plastic uh, sheeting, I'm gonna build a wood frame to put around this whole thing to keep any air currents um, out of this. And then I got, uh, well, gummy bears, but that's not really for the experiment. I just like gummy bears. Uh, I got a few different types of wire here. This is just a multi-pack. I think it's intended as uh, picture hanging wire here. Um, so you got six different types there. I'm not sure how much variation there is. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. Um, some of the, the green floral wire, so it's really thin, uh, 24 gauge, which is a very thin one. I uh, also got some fishing line and some plastic picture hanging wire as well. Um, I think all of these ones are different types of metal, probably aluminum mostly on these, uh, but you know, this one is gonna be a plastic picture hanging wire. Um, so that'll give us a little bit different results on that. Um, and so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the wire as our next step. We're gonna try and find the wire that gives us the, the smallest value for that kappa, that torsional constant, um, because the smaller that is, the more deflection we expect to see in our beam as we put our masses nearby, and the easier it's gonna be to detect that, the, the less um, you know, perfect we have to be as far as uncertainty in order to, to observe that there's a difference. Certainly, we're going to try and eliminate uncertainty as much as possible, but uh, any, any uh, change we can make in our favor, we're gonna try for that. So, today, we're just looking at um, testing out these different types of, uh, of wire. I'll give you some um, more detailed information. We'll pull these apart a little bit, and uh, well, we'll see what you think. I'll get, uh, get your input on this one. Um, as for right now, uh, let's look at material for each of these and thickness. And uh, I've got a, a little microscope, so we'll look at uh, you know, what, what they look like under the microscope and see if that gives us some idea of uh, what would be a good one to use, and then we'll test them all out. So let's take a look at some of these. Um, we'll just do a little, <laughs> little unboxing of the wire video here. So I have this multi-set first, six pack. All right, I've got uh, some digital calipers, so we'll get a couple of measurements of the thickness of this. Let's see, this black one, I think they're probably all pretty similar actually, so we may not end up doing all of these, but looks like this black one is some kind of metal wire coated in plastic. Um, for the thickness on this one, let's check that quick. All right, for the thickness, I'm reading, oh, whew, tough to see there. 
looks like 0 0.40 millimeters on this. I suspect that there's a metal wire underneath here. So let's try stripping that off and see if we can get to just the metal wire. Okay, that looks like maybe a little steel wire in there. It is just a single strand, which is good. I don't want to use anything twisted for torsional balance. And then what do we get for a reading without the plastic? Okay, it looks like there we're down to 0 0.36 millimeters. So it's a nice thin wire. Okay, uh, let's see. This red one looks about the same. Like I said, I think a lot of these are about the same. I pinched that with my fingernails. The covering actually comes off pretty easily on this. Let's check the, uh, the thickness on this red wire. Okay, and we got 0 0.36 millimeters on that one too. So it looks like the reds and the blacks there are exactly the same. So we won't bother testing all the, the rest of those. Um, and then we've got these ones in here too. I think those are probably the same as each other. There's no covering on these. And I, I feel like this is aluminum maybe and not, uh, not steel. Let's see, the thickness on this reads as 0.59 millimeters, so a little bit thicker, but also maybe a different material. It doesn't look quite the same under the light to me, but uh, worth, worth investigating anyway. All right, and we'll and just do a quick check on this. Yeah, and 0.67 on that one. So I think these are um, supposed to be the same thickness as well. All right. So we've got those ones tested out here, a few different, or a couple different options anyway for those. Next up, I've got this green enameled floral wire. So this one says it's enameled. So there is a coating on this wire as well. Let's see what the thickness is. And with enamel, the coating can sometimes be burned off. So we could look at doing that. Looks like we've got a 0.47 millimeter thickness on this one. I can't really tell what's underneath this and with enamel it's not likely to slide off very easily. So I'm going to see if I can scratch it off a bit with a pair of scissors. Yeah, it's not really doing it. I wonder if we try some sandpaper. Okay. So got the enamel off, and that looks to be about the same as, um, as this wire in terms of appearance, color, and luster and such. Um, without the enamel, there's probably not much of a change here. Okay, I'm reading 0.53 or 5.2 millimeters, it looks like. Now that's a little tricky because sanding it, I can actually wear away some thickness, though that may actually be a useful tool for us wear away some thickness in one spot of the wire. That might be a good good technique. Okay, keep these in the same order that we did them in for when we look at them under the microscope. Next up, we've got the fishing line. This is four pound test fishing line, which was um, not quite the smallest I could find, but I, I didn't want to go with, I think I saw a two pound. Didn't want to go with that because I'm not sure that'll actually hold the weight that we're trying to put on this. So the four pound test fishing line, that is, I'm not sure what they make these out of, but it's some kind of a plastic instead of a metal. And let's just quick check the thickness on this. This feels quite a bit thinner than anything we've seen before. And in fact, it's 0.15 millimeters. So that may put this in the running for a good material to use, just that thickness. All right, and then last one, we've got the invisible hanging wire. This looks like some kind of plastic as well, maybe similar material to what the fishing line is made out of, but this looks significantly thicker. All right, yep, we're up above a millimeter on this one, or right at, 
Okay, I think I'm compressing it a little bit. Looks like right around a millimeter, and I can kind of squeeze it down below. So this one has a little bit of a give to it, so I'll need to be careful in how I measure that. Maybe I'll use the flat part of the jaws here, so I don't pinch it too much. Okay, and there I'm actually seeing a little more than a millimeter now. So, this looks like the thickest string. That by itself makes me think that this may not be a good choice, but we'll test them all out. Let's take a look under the, the microscope quick, see if there's anything uh, interesting there, and then we'll uh, move on to the prediction and testing phase. One extra test that, uh, that I thought of here, try and figure out what the materials are made of. I've got a little magnet here, and I noticed that the first one that we tested, the, the red and the black wire, the magnet does react with those. Um, so that suggests probably steel to me, um, and the black wire, exactly the same. Oops, there it is, okay. Uh, and then we've got these aluminum bars here where we don't see the attraction. Um, so definitely not aluminum. And in fact, the ones that I thought were aluminum at first, um, they actually get, uh, the magnet sticks onto them as well. So uh, that, that probably make, makes me think that probably all these are actually the same material. I'm gonna go ahead and guess steel. Um, rather than having a mixture of a couple of different materials. So that probably means that all we really need to think about is thickness on these guys. Um, and then obviously the, you know, the fishing line and the picture hanging wire, those are plastic, so those won't attract the magnet. All right, last thing that we do here is to take a look under the uh, USB microscope here. I don't know how much we're gonna learn from, uh, uh, from these videos, but Hey, it's worth a shot. Also, the USB microscope's just kind of cool to use, so hey, why not? We've got it. Uh, let's see, so this is just the, uh, the wood of my workbench. Cool texture there. This is the, um, the first coil type that we looked at. So that was the one that came in both red and black. You can see the reflections change a little bit as I press down on this. Looks like it's fairly uniform. We can see some little stripes in there. That's from the pulling process, I'm sure. I don't see really anything of too much interest on that. It seems to be a roughly round. And the black one, I wouldn't expect to be much different. Let's see. There's the black one. Yeah, about the same. And that coating that we pulled off here, in person, or in, you know, just feeling in my hand, it doesn't feel especially thick. You can see that that coating added a lot of thickness to this. So I think if we could get away with it, this ends up being a good, uh, good one to use. We'll definitely want to take the coating off. Um, that was for a section, so we get most of the twisting happening in that section. All right, the next one, this is the bare steel wire, or bare metal, I think steel probably. And... Okay, so there's that one. Again, pretty round, looks pretty uniform. Just as a reference, this is the red coil right next to it. So you can see it's considerably thicker than the, um, the red coil once we strip away that, um, that plastic on there. With the plastic, it looks like it's about the same thickness with the plastic on there. Okay, the green garden wire that had the enamel coating on it, that's here, and yeah, it looks about the same. This one looks a little bit more dinged up, but that's kind of to be expected since we sanded away out of the sandpaper. You can see where that, and yeah, there's where the green enamel starts there, so you have some transition from the bare metal to the green enamel coating on that one. Now the enamel is really not very thick. I can't really tell much of a difference in thickness between these two sections. So that might be uh, worth noting that I don't actually have to scrape all the enamel off, or maybe I don't need to, if this ends up being a good choice. All right, the next one is the fishing line, which is really tough to see. There we go, on the end. All right, here's the fishing line. And that one is really nicely round. 
fairly clear too. We can see through it to the wood, wood surface beneath it pretty well. Uh, I'm going to grab the. Uh, see, the last one we looked at was that uh, the green garden wire here. So I'll just stick that back in here. So just as a point of comparison, that that plastic uh, fishing line is a lot thinner than the wires we were seeing before. Even the uh, See, this is the first wire we tested. So again, a lot, not thinner, right? Now. You know, thinner, but not much thinner, but thinner for sure. And then the last one I looked at was that plastic picture hanging wire. And this again is fairly clear, pretty uniform, nicely rounded, but wow, that is a thick piece of uh, uh, piece of plastic. Well, like I said, it is darn hot in here, so I am ready to call it quits for a few minutes. Um, next step is going to be testing these things to figure out what, uh, which wire has the lowest torsional constant. Um, we are going to do that by getting a, um, an oscillator, a torsional oscillator going, and I'm looking at the period for that. Um, but that will take a while to set up, and the tests on that are going to be quite long term. So. We've got some time, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So put in the comments, what do you think is going to, uh, going to be our best choice on this one? Um, are we going to go with the thinnest wire, or are we going to go with uh, you know, something thicker, like the, uh, the plastics or the, um, the bare wire? Yeah, what are you thinking is going to work well on this? Also, other things that uh, you think I ought to be considering. One that comes to my mind that I want to make sure I test is the length of the wire. Everything I've seen so far about torsional constant has just said that the material and the, uh, the thickness, the diameter of the wire, is what matters. But I figure it's worth testing the length too, just to be sure. And if it doesn't matter, that makes my device a little easier to build because I don't have to have a big long wire for this thing. Uh, so I'd love to see your comments down below. Uh, and by all means, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the little notification bell so that uh, you get updates um, when we post new videos on this project. Thanks for coming along for the journey. We'll see you in the next video.